What is going on everybody out there and welcome to Fan Game of the Week. Where I like to take a look at some of the cool and interesting fan games I find on my journeys throughout the internet. Today we're taking a look at a fan game that I haven't really followed for a while, but it's actually seen some massive improvements. So this is Pokemon Generations. And I followed this back when they had kind of their version uh, 1.0. Um, and you know, for what it's worth, I thought it was pretty fun. And so I, I came back to it, someone had recommended it to uh, me recently. And they kind of have a version 2.0 where a lot of things have been upgraded and changed. And so I thought, you know, I'd check it out and it's actually a lot of fun. Unfortunately, the project has been cancelled, and I will go in depth on that a little bit later when I'm actually playing the game. So let's take a look at just kind of the menu. So when you first boot up the game, you will come to this screen. Um, in the top left, you can see you have a single player, uh, you can name yourself, you can also start your own server and connect to a server. This game was sort of meant to be, I don't want to really say an MMO, but it was meant to be uh, played online with your friends. Which is really ambitious, but really cool. I've seen some people, on, uh, at least on other YouTube videos, that have played this online, and it looks like a lot of fun. Um, besides that, you have some standard options. You know, you can change your uh, avatar, music, reset, all that. But let's just jump right into just a quick single-player match. So right away, you're thrown in, and it's a lot of. It's pretty cool. It is 3D graphics. Very impressive. Uh, for the most part, this is sort of an open world where you can do whatever. Uh, because this is sort of an alpha to their game, there isn't really any objectives, but they did have the entire uh, battling, uh, battling system in place. So I will show you how that works really quick. As you can see on the bottom right, I do have a lot of my Pokemon already caught. Um, I didn't find a way to delete uh, save data, so I have a bunch of them. But let's call out, uh, let's just call out Squirtle right now. Really cool, Squirtle's following you around. He'll follow you around. He has such an awesome run. <laughs> we can go around, so that's pretty cool. All right, Squirrel, are you ready to battle? Uh, this isn't a good matchup, but <laughs> let's fight uh, Pikachu. So you can see kind of that red outline around Pikachu. That means that once I left click on him with the mouse, I will initiate an attack. And attacking is a lot different in this game than a standard Pokemon game. Uh, let's go, I'll show you. Okay, sorry, here we go. So once you initiate attack, you actually uh, control Squirtle now. And you have four attacks, just like in the game, so you can press one, and then you're able to aim your attack. So I have Tackle, Bubble Beam, um, what is that, Tail Whip, I think, and then um, Withdraw, I believe. Which is nice, that's cool. <laughs> Alright, hit him with a Bubble Beam. More bubbles! We need more bubbles! Alrighty, so we've knocked out Pikachu, and now I'm not sure what happens once you have six and try to catch him, but uh, let's find out. So once you've uh, knocked out Pikachu, you press backspace to bring out the catching uh, menu. And you can see kind of this cursor, you can throw Pokeballs to catch them. And then once you hit them, it plays the awesome uh, anime animation. Does the rocking, and then you catch him, which is pretty cool. I am not sure, um, I'm not sure if I can use Pikachu though. I guess now would be a good time to kind of go in depth with kind of all the bag stuff they have going on here. So, because this was an MMO and it's on the computer, it's really cool, but they have, um, just the whole interface with you at all times, which is really nice. So, go over, the, over to the menu, we have, um, let's return Squirtle, maybe that's affecting it. Or maybe I'm in the wrong spot, I might be. So, I think this is the Pokédex right here that I'm on currently. Uh, they didn't code that in as far as I know. They also have kind of a placeholder thing for items, so they have the whole item inventory pretty well as far as I know. So, items, I think they were also planning to add in, like, trainer customization, which would have been pretty cool. Um, probably key items, potions and stuff, so that's pretty neat. Uh, moving on, oh, there we go. You do have a list of your Pokemon, their stats. Pretty neat. Filter through them. No Pikachu on there, so I'm wondering what happened to Pikachu. Uh, he's probably just lost in the Pokeball world, I don't know. 
Um, they have a trainer card icon, it looks like. Um, the chat thing, uh, yeah, just a chat, which is pretty standard for most MMO type games. And then kind of a settings and options uh, menu, which I'm assuming is the gear. So yeah, I mean, they had it pretty fleshed out for the most part. And, I mean, it's almost a shame that they cancelled it because having like an objective and being able to play a game like this online with your friends would have been really cool to do. Um, so we can heal our Pokemon right here. They didn't really get hurt at all, but we can still do that. Um, I'm gonna explore around a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about Pikachu. I'm sure he's he's probably lost forever, but I'll just show you kind of the uh, just the scope of at least this starting area they have. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I really really like the look of this uh, game. I wasn't sold on it before, but looking at it now, I think it works pretty well. And with a little polish, this could have been a really fun place to just explore. Or like the full game, I mean. You can kind of swim down here. You can have water battles, like we could go fight that Squirtle over there. I already have one though, so that's, that's kind of a shame. Um, we can go up here. Got some rocks. I'm betting, like, you know, if had the game gone on farther, they probably would have in, uh, implemented Rock Smash that you could use for that stuff, which would have been super awesome to see. Um, we'll keep going around. Hello, Growlithe, how you doing? Alrighty, we'll see you later. Um, while I'm running around, I'll go over the controls pretty quickly. So you can map the controls, but I believe there are some buttons that you cannot map. And that kind of messed me up for a little bit. I thought that uh, the game was broken when I had downloaded it. Um, so, uh, SW, or yeah, A, S, D, and W move you around. And by holding left click, you can move the camera, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to get a little nauseous. Um, left click also implements a battle, which you can only do when you have a Pokemon out. And to call a Pokemon out, I believe the default button is tab. And that will call out the first Pokemon that is um, in your uh, party. So the button that I don't think you can map at all, at least to my understanding, is like throwing a Pokeball to catch something. And that is actually backspace. And that brings up this little, uh, this little menu. And I thought my game was broken because I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to throw a Pokeball. But it is backspace, and I don't believe you can change it. But you should be able to just catch Pokemon instantly with it. I don't believe they ha had implemented like uh, variable catch rates or anything yet, so I think any uh, Pokemon you throw a Pokeball at, you will catch. See, there we go. He's chilling with Pikachu in Limbo <laughs> because who knows where, uh, who knows where they went. Alrighty, we'll go into. You can actually go into uh, Professor Oak's lab. Pretty cool. Front doors. You can go up here. I uh, kind of got the uh, the machines based off of the original Pokemon games, or like Fire Red and Leaf Green. There's kind of a table, a chair. So yeah, pretty cool. It looks pretty nice up here. You can also do like this ninja flip up here. <laughs> I don't know, it makes me laugh every time. I don't, it's just not... I don't know, it's not the most realistic thing. I know uh, saying that in a Pokemon game context sounds weird, but... He does like a front flip jump. That's I don't know. That that's really nitpicky though. That is I don't know. Alrighty, so we can go out and we can see kind of the scope of the game they have. So they were planning, to my understanding, to kind of make the full game, or at least they had the kind of the Pallet Town area pretty much uh, kind of mapped out, to my understanding, as you can see here. They did base this off of the anime, but it is not, you know, entirely anime correct, as you can tell. But that, oh, just the possibilities of, like, running around, going into, you know, different houses, that's super cool. So I should probably mention, um, so as, as always, I will put up a download link in the description, but, uh, there is kind of an issue. So normally when you search for Pokemon Generations, it will bring you to the NDDB page where you can download the game. But the problem with downloading that version is that number one, it isn't up to date or the most current version. And number two, it will install forever. It will say, you know, it's installing and then it will never, uh, it will never actually install the game. So it'll just, uh, it'll be pretty much unplayable. 
So I'm going to be linking, when the project was cancelled, there was a forum post on the Pokemon Generations uh, official forum website. And the forum post had the, it had the, I believe the latest uh, playable version and also had the latest development version. You're going to want to download the, the latest playable version because that has, you know, Pokemon, like the battle feature, the catching feature and all of that. You're going to want to download that version um, rather than the latest, I think, the development version. I might be mixing the names up a little there, but I think the forum post will explain it. But from my understanding, the latest uh, development version just has, I think they added on a little bit more to like the Pallet Town area, like in here that I'm swimming around on. But you can't actually like play or battle with the Pokemon. So you're going to want to get the one where you can actually, you know, fight and do stuff. Uh, so that's just a heads up for when you go and download it. If you download, of course. I. I don't know, I don't want to make it sound like everyone's going to download this. I think it's pretty fun. But granted, I can see a lot of people out there kind of not liking this. I mean, granted, it's not the most, you know, polished game. There's still some issues and bugs. But I think, you know, with enough time, it could have it could have been something really special. Uh, going into a little bit more about kind of the project itself, so... They modeled all of this stuff themselves. They made the animations themselves and the effects themselves. They could have easily, you know, ripped the Pokemon models from, I think, you know, there's plenty of Pokemon games out there. But I believe they went in and they did it all themselves just to model it. And they kind of had this big kind of recruiting process where you could go in and make animations and stuff for all the Pokemon. So it was pretty cool. There's a lot of people, you know, really flocking to it and making it pretty large. Unfortunately, though, that gets into the cancellation of the project. I thought, you know, the project was going pretty well, but unfortunately, the main guy, I'm, I'm blanking on his name, I think it is Zao Toku. I might be mispronouncing that, um, but unfortunately, he was the main guy, and he decided that he wanted to cancel the game. Uh, I think there's a bunch of various reasons from his personal life, um, there's also kind of financial reasons, uh, too, I believe. So they always wanted this game to sort of be an online adventure with your friends, and the cost of running a server for, you know, all the people playing it was pretty high, I think. So, I think that that sort of uh, contributed to uh, the closing of the game, was that uh, server costs would have been super high to do and uh, maintain, so they wanted to uh, just sort of stop. I think, uh, I want to say it costed, uh, like, upwards of, you know, $300 a month to, uh, keep the servers running. I might be way off base with that, uh, with that, uh, money estimate, but I know it was a lot. And then kind of the third reason that, um, I know about that was the reason for, uh, sort of canceling the game was sort of the, uh, the impending doom of copyright. So, when you uh, play, or sorry, when you make a game using an IP from someone else, which is pretty much all fan games, you always run the risk of having uh, Nintendo come in and, uh, you know, do the thing where they take the game down because of copyright infringement. I, I really, off the top of my head, I don't know many games, at least uh, Nintendo fan games, where that's happened, but there's always that small risk, um hanging over your head where they could come down at any moment and just take all your stuff offline. So I'm sure that that must have been hard for the development team to deal with, you know, because, I mean, working out all of these features only to have the game be shut down would be just awful. That's such an awful feeling. So I think that that is one of the many reasons they contributed to them uh, finally shutting down the game. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I can kind of see where they're coming from with that. Had the game not shut down, I think this could have been really big. Um, they were planning a lot of features. I know that they were planning kind of an online hub where people could gather and do kind of random online trades or battles. I know they were working on Evolution. I'm not sure if Evolution is implemented into uh, this version or not. I don't think it is, but I could be wrong. Uh, they were working on, I believe, gym leaders and stuff like that. So it was really cool. This project was going great. Just the scope of it might have been a little bit too large for the team to handle, but I think that, you know, had they stuck with it maybe a little bit longer, we could have, uh, could have had something great. So, on to the legacy. There are many, uh, games that have spawned from, uh... Sorry, let me get out Pidgey. I don't think I've used Pidgey yet. Jeez. 
So kind of onto the legacy, there are many uh, fan games out there that are pretty similar to this that have spawned sort of from this. I know that there's a bunch of sort of 3D online Pokemon games people are trying to make that were inspired by Pokemon Generations. I haven't tried any of them out, none of them have looked nearly as good as uh, this one in my opinion. But uh, maybe I'll have to give them a look. But I'd recommend at least checking this game out. Well, it isn't uh, finished all the way. I'm sorry, Pidgey. That was my bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so while this game isn't finished all the way, I do think it's worth checking out, and it has become my fan game of the week. There isn't much to do in the game, but I think that uh, just playing around... I haven't tried online yet, but if online servers are fun, maybe messing around with, uh, you know, your friends in this game, battling each other, I think that that's a lot of fun. So as usual, I will throw up download links in the description if you want to check this out. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. I'd love for a game, a, po a real Pokemon game to be like this. I don't know if we'll ever get one, but for now this will have to do. So this has been Fan Game of the Week, Pokemon Generations. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you later.